No. I literally for that reason and that reason alone, I will never do tapins on myself ever again. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hi, my name is Hannah and I go over all things budget friendly, hair, beauty, fashion, and other lifestyle type of content. So if any of that interests you, then be sure to subscribe. Now, if you are not new here, then my hair looks a little different than it did the last time that you saw me. Hey, editing Hannah here. This video was supposed to go out several weeks ago, so I'm sitting here going on about how my hair looks different and it's new and you know, all this kind of stuff. You have most definitely already seen this a few times, so that this little explanation. That's because I've got zero extensions in. I've had a haircut. This is different. I... <sighs> This is short hair to me, I know to some people it's not short, it's long or you know, medium, whatever. This is short to me, okay? You see what my hair used to look like. So this is short, okay? Now today I'm going to be going over my experience with tape and hair extensions. Now that I have them out, you will hear a completely unbiased opinion. I mean, I would have been as unbiased as possible before, but now you'll know that I'm unbiased because I'm not wearing them right now. But before we get into that, of course, my mug of the day. It's just a simple, basic, clear mug. I love clear mugs. I think they're so cool. <sighs> okay, so I'm gonna have the video broken down into sections. I'll try to put chapters down there in case you only care about one thing when you clicked on this video. So basically what I'm going to do is go over a brief explanation of my history with hair extensions. I'm going to go over a pro and con list of tape in hair extensions, a pro and con list of doing tape in hair extensions yourself, and then a pro and con list of doing the affordable tape in hair extensions. Okay, so uh, again, I'll have all of that divided up for you so you can skip to what you came here for, but I wanted to tell you a little bit about my experience with them to show you my level of expertise, which is you know, it is what it is, but just so you that you know that I do at least kind of know what I'm talking about. Let me tell you my experience. So several months ago, I finally got tape and hair extensions after a long time of considering them, a long time of researching them, and a long time of finally wanting them. A few months ago, I got them. This is the video of me for the very first time putting in tape and hair extensions. In case you're curious, this is this is that video. So upon my journey with tape and hair extensions, I tried three different brands. They had different lengths, different thicknesses, and believe it or not, different installation methods. Basically, you have your tape, and I did one where they were all just normal tapes. The second time I did it where I cut them in half so they were half the size, and then the last time I did a combo where I did some of the full size, and then in some places I did half size. So all three different installation methods. The brands I tried were Maxful, Amazing Beauty Hair, and Morsu. I can't really speak for the longevity of Maxful because I didn't have those ones in that long before I tried another brand. But between the other two, Amazing Beauty Hair was actually my favorite. They held up a little better, but we'll get to that later on in the video. So really that kind of, that pretty much sums up my history with tape ins. So now let's go to a pro and con list. So overall, pro and cons of tape and extensions. And this list is going to be as much as possible non-biased towards brands and the fact that I did them myself. They're just gonna be tape ins in general, as best as I can. So first, let's go over the pros. One, they really do feel like your own hair for the most part. You know, they move around pretty easily. And this is all if you got them installed correctly. They move around pretty easily and they blend pretty well. And my hair is really fine and really thin. So for me to say that, that means something, I'm just saying. Let me just, a little brief thing with these pros and cons, they're gonna kind of be comparing them to other types of extensions, mainly clip-in extensions, because those are the other ones that I've tried. So you can wear them up, which is super nice. You. <laughs> You can wear clip-ins up, but I have tried the methods that people use. Rude. I have tried the methods that people use for that and it just doesn't go well for me. I think my hair is a little too thin for that. So what's really awesome about tape-ins, even though they're permanent, you can wear them up if you have them installed correctly. And I do have a video on how to hide your tape-in extensions when you put your hair in a ponytail. I've got a lot of fun, really cool, really nice, 
tricks that I share in that video, so go check it out if you're curious. Another pro is you install them once and you're good for weeks, like six to eight weeks or something like that. I think I went, I think I went over six weeks for one and a about six weeks for another and yeah they really I could have probably gone longer they just get a little harder to hide in your hair the longer you have them in just because they grow out more and so it's a little it's a little harder to control them especially when putting your hair up or in any kind of style so they're pretty easy to hide that kind of goes in line with putting your hair up that kind of stuff but just in general wearing your hair down in different kind of styles up they're pretty easy to hide which is really nice that can be really difficult for clip-ins at least in my experience it's a lot harder to hide clip-ins than it has been to hide my tape-ins and then finally they they give you confidence i mean wherever you're coming from whether it's you just wanting thickness you just wanting length or you wanting length and thickness <sighs> When you have these things in, you feel more confident. I at least felt a lot more confident. I could wear my hair, like, it'd be dirty. It'd be, you know, doing something crazy and i just pin it up in a ponytail. And I felt so much more confident than if that happens with this hair. Like, this hair doesn't just go in a ponytail and look nice, you know? It's it's teeny tiny ponytail. So with, with tape-ins, it just, my hair didn't have to look great for it to look great. For me like just thick hair in general I think it's a lot easier to look nice in than thin fine hair it's a lot harder to make it look decent you know what I'm saying okay so that was it for the con blah, 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 blah. that was it for the pros let's move on to the cons okay so they can be pretty uncomfortable to sleep in my first two times of having the tape ins it took a few days and then they would be fine the last installation something was just a little different I guess with the installation I don't know and pretty much the whole time I had them there were a few that were just uncomfortable to sleep in and really has, that probably has a lot to do with placement honestly but also you have to sleep in them and it's just it's not going to be as comfortable as not sleeping in them so it's difficult to shower with them in I mean oh my gosh yes I came from not having much hair at all to then having like five to ten times the thickness of my natural hair Boy, were they difficult to shower in. I was gonna do a video on realistically what it's like to shower with tape-ins. I just never got around to it. <sighs> I mean, cause they tell you in some videos, like when I watched them, they're like, just put your fingers between the tapes and that's how you rub. No, I tried that and it would hurt. Like it would pull my hair and just, no. So I would literally have to go through and lift up each layer, shampoo, go the next layer, lift it up, shampoo, all the way down my head and that took time and it's just that uh, my showers took forever forever with that oh my word it was a nightmare i already don't love taking showers i just I don't like the process of going in getting wet getting nice and warm with my hot water and then having to get out and dry and just I don't enjoy showering. So when I had those in, it took 10 times longer to shower and it made it so much more dreadful to shower and like, I didn't need that stress, you know? Oh, anyways, another con is they are very, very time consuming. So as we just heard, they make showers take 10 times longer. Two, getting ready for bed, for me at least with this hair, to that hair it took longer because i have to braid my hair and i know that doesn't take a lot of time but like when you're really tired and you're just done braiding your hair before bed sucks because you need to have your hair braided to sleep in them if you really don't want if you really want to protect your hair and, and cause the least amount of damage as possible you need to sleep in a braid so that was a little more time consuming the time it took my hair to naturally air dry oh that's very time consuming and then just the styling your hair whether it be from straight out of the shower which took forever or if it's just the next morning and getting your hair like putting my hair up doing all my methods to hide my tape-ins all that kind of stuff <gasps> very very time consuming another con is they are damaging like i don't care what people say about they're the least damaging it doesn't matter if they're the least damaging or not they're still damaging like you're doing something different to your hair you're putting tension and stress on your hair and there are more things to likely go wrong to cause problems like they are damaging my hair definitely got a lot thinner Let's see if you can see and this wasn't really the tape ins fault. Like it wasn't the tape ins that did it. It was just the fact that I had them that kind of caused this problem. My hair got shorter after wearing them. Now, again, the tape ins didn't do that. I mean, they don't touch the ends of your hair, but I think it's the fact that my hair is so fine and thin already and I had it really blonde that I needed to spend a lot more time and a lot more care to my hair and the fact that I had a bunch of extensions in made it a lot harder for me to be more careful and devote more quality time to my hair than I was able to so 
inadvertently the tapin's fault but it wasn't like the tapins did that or will do that to your hair and then the last con is they can be pretty expensive now you can go with these affordable brands and they're cheaper or you go with a normal brand or a high-end brand and they're expensive and that's not including getting them installed if you don't want to install them yourself so I think tapins overall can cost or probably do I'll just say they do cost more than clip-ins. You wear them out faster, so you have to replace them faster. Getting them installed, if that's what you do, costs more money. Even if you do them yourself, you have to buy stuff to remove them and that kind of stuff, and that costs more money. So just overall, they're more expensive than clip-ins. Whew, I'm already done talking. But that's the end of that pro and con list. All right, next pro and con list. Pros and cons of doing them yourself at home. <sighs> okay. Pro. It saves you a lot of money. Hundreds. It saves you a ton of money doing them yourself. That's it for pros. Let's move on to cons. Removing them yourself is the worst. The absolute worst. I cannot tell you the nightmare. It would take me days to get that crap out of my hair. Alright, so... I you know what? No, I don't even want to touch them. I have my I have my tape and remover stuff right there, the sprays that I use, but I don't even want to touch them because they, they're nasty on the outside now. Getting that tape off is an absolute nightmare. I can't even begin to express to you how much of a nightmare. And that process alone damaged my hair like crazy. Because like I know there are ways to be careful and stuff like that, but if, after you've been working for six hours on your hair, I kid you not, this last time, it took me six hours from start to finish pre-shower. Like, that's before I went to shower to get this crap out of my hair. Six hours to remove these tapins with the spray. No. I literally, for that reason and that reason alone, I will never do tapins on myself ever again. If I ever do tapins again, I'm getting them done professionally. So if you take anything away from this video, have someone do your tapins for you. I kid you not. Or at least have them remove them. I don't know. But... Goodness gracious, that was a nightmare. And then it would take me literally at least four, usually five or six showers to get that crap out. And let me tell you, I would take a shower, come out, dry my hair or let it dry, have to use all of that remover stuff on my hair again and look for the glue and the residue stuff that didn't come out, remove it again with this remover, lose more hair in the process, shower again, repeat that whole thing four to six times. I am not even joking. Shower, more remover and pulling and pain and hair loss. Shower, more remover and pulling and pain and hair loss. Do not do these yourself. Don't. Just, just don't. Okay? I warned you. Next con. It's difficult. Okay? It is hard to do yourself. I did my first batch myself. Then the other two, my husband did for me because it was difficult. Now, doing the full solid pieces was a lot easier to do on my own, but really the way I did it with the half pieces, that's the way to go. Like, it made it so much easier to style and move around and that kind of stuff. That was way too hard. I could not do that by myself. So my husband did it for me. But one, you're not necessarily going to have someone who can do it for you. Two, it's still even hard for them and you're risking damage because they're not a trained professional. Unless you have a trained professional that you live with or know. But it's difficult for you and or for whoever you have helped you. And then the last con, it is more damaging to do on your own. So that kind of goes in with the other things I was saying. Because of the nightmare of removing them yourself and because you are not a trained professional doing them on yourself, it's going to be more damaging because you can't do it perfectly. I mean, at least not as perfect as they can, you know, and so... 99% chance that you're going to cause more damage than if a professional did it for you. So take anything out of this. Go to a salon. Seriously, go to a salon. All right, our final pro and con list. Pros and cons of using the affordable tape and hair extension companies. Now I'm not going to, this is not me going back on anything that I've ever said about these companies or in my reviews. I did mean everything I said, but this is after having them for a while. And then this is just comparing to if you want to do affordable or not. If I say something that leans more towards not, it doesn't mean I'm mad at or don't like the company. It's just it's gonna be your call, but let's go through the pros. They're affordable. I mean, that's where they're called affordable brands, right? They are more affordable. Some people can't afford to drop hundreds or thousands of dollars on your hair, you know? So these being like 
couple hundred max, not bad, not bad at all. And two, I think these affordable brands are a great way to test out tape and extensions if you're not sure yet if this is something that you're gonna like. You're not dropping hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars for a one-time use kind of thing. You're spending just a little bit to see if you like them. So I think this is a really good way to test out if tape-ins are right for you. That's all I got for pros. Let's go to cons now. One, you cannot reuse them. I don't care what they say. I don't care what they say. You cannot reuse them. They are more affordable for a reason. And like, I have no proof of this. You can go look up videos. They say Remy human hair, but after several, several washes, they do not act like human hair anymore. Now, I don't think that they don't use human hair. I think they don't use 100% pure virgin human hair. So like after a few weeks and wash it, and I only wash my hair every two to three days, which is a lot easier to do for people with thin hair. It's a lot easier to do when you have tape ins. Like it really helps hide the, the oiliness if you have an oily scalp like I do. It's easy to get away with not washing them as often, which is really nice and healthy for your natural hair. Anyways, that was a little side note. They started to feel not fully human hair. And my husband put it in great words, in great words this last time, it looked like Barbie hair. Yeah. Now, when you style it, it is easy to hide that, I think, but the, when you can really notice is like when you get out of the shower and blow dry your hair or let your hair air dry, it's shiny and looks, it doesn't look like purely synthetic hair or anything. It just looks like maybe it's mixed with a little bit of silicone or something. I don't know. I don't know. These are just, uh, these are these are possibilities. I am not accusing or full on assuming. So it's just a possibility based off my experience. Okay. Second con, they get impossibly tangly after a few weeks. I think that's part of it not being full human hair, but it got to where I would brush it, take one little spot, brush it, brush it. Every time I brushed it, it was still tangly. It was just not the best quality, but think of the price. Like kind of you know kind of makes sense so they would just get super 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 tangly third con they started to feel gross again part of my earlier theory they just started to feel weird like coated maybe and the more you wash them the worse it got and my biggest con with them is that because you can't reuse them and if you're really picky with how your hair looks you probably want them out sooner rather than later they will cost you more money in the long run, right? So how often can you reuse the high end brands? They say you can reuse them like up to a year if you take good care of them. So let's say you're taking perfectly good care of them, a year. So say, let's say you got the most out of these affordable tape-ins and you got new tape-ins every other month. So you had to buy new tape-ins six times throughout the year versus once of this other one. Say this other one is $1,000. That's pretty high for tape-ins, I think. Like I, a lot of one that, ones I've seen weren't that much. But let's say you paid $1,000 for your tape-ins and they lasted you a year. These other ones that you bought, say they cost 200. They don't all cost that much. But let's say they cost 200. $1,200 for subpar hair that doesn't look great towards the end, especially not after eight weeks, versus $1,000 for good hair. You see my point. It's gonna cost you more money in the long run, okay? It is it, more frustration and more just unhappiness for how they should be versus how they are. So here's what I would tell you if you were looking at these affordable brands for tape-ins. If you've never used tape-ins before and you don't know if you're ready to commit that much money into getting tape-ins that will last you a long time, but you're just not sure, go for the affordable ones. If you have a salon near you that will put in whatever extensions you bring to them, do it. If you are willing to go through what I talked about with doing them yourself, and just so you can get an idea, do it with the affordable ones. I'm not kidding. It's really, it's, I'm so glad I did. I learned a lot and if I spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars on tapins and I realized they're thinning out my hair a little more than I'd like or I just need a break from them something I'd be very unhappy right now so definitely go for it if you are not sure otherwise don't do it if you are like no I like tapins and I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna commit go with a more expensive brand it'll be better for you in many many ways down the road now let me say something about these hair brands. It may sound like I'm bad mouthing them and saying their hair is crappy. I'm not saying that, but other than testing them out for the first time, I do not recommend getting semi-permanent hair extensions from these affordable companies. However, I 1000% recommend getting these affordable extensions from these affordable extension brands for clip-ins. I kid you not, clip-ins, you don't have to watch you don't have to wash 
nearly as often. You can go a long time without washing clip-ins if you're careful with them and you know you are planning it that way so you don't have to wash them that much. Really the only thing that makes these affordable ones like is the fact that they lower in quality every single time you wash them. You don't have to wash clip-ins much at all and you can be more careful with them when you wash them because they're not like in the shower on your head in the moment like you can take your time and wash them you know in a sink or something I would never <sighs> I don't recommend getting the expensive brands for clip-ins. Affordable, I think, is the way to go because they last so long when they're just clip-ins. So I'm not bad mouthing the brands, just don't do semi-permanent, do clip-ins. So in conclusion, as you can see, I no longer wear tape-in extensions. The two main things I learned from my experience with tape-ins is that I will never do them at home again and I will never do affordable ones again. That's what I have learned. It's just too damaging and too much work for me to do. It wasn't worth the time investment, money investment at home and the, the lower quality towards the end, just not worth it for me personally. I think I've said all of my buts. I think I've gotten all that out, so take what you will from this. I really hope that it helped you. Let me know if you have tried tape-ins before or if you are thinking about it and if this video changed your mind one way or the other. But I really hope you learned something, found this video useful. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really helps show me what kind of stuff you like to see. And that's all I have for you. Thank you guys so much and I hope you have a wonderful day.